actually like saw it and I, I found it. Same artist? Girl? Yeah, 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 it is. Oh, nice, nice. Hey, look at that girl in the picture. Oh, yeah. that. That's just someone I used to care about. Welcome back to Point of Focus and I hope you enjoyed our short clip on HIV. Today we are discussing HIV and how it has really affected our young people in Trinidad and Tobago and even globally. And today to get our, the young people's perspective on HIV with me in studio, we have two uh, very special guests. I have Miss Narissa Changa. Hi, Hi Narissa, thanks for joining me today. No problem. And we have Mr. Jabari Lynch. Thank you so much for joining me to Jabari. And you know, I'm really excited to get your perspectives as young people in terms of HIV because you know, we hear about HIV all the time. True. But how often do we hear young people speak out on HIV? True. So you know, I'm going to start with you Jabari. If you can tell us a little about yourself and you know, what HIV means to you. Okay. Um, well, of course, my name is Jabari Lynch. I'm the General Secretary of um, Trinidad and Tobago Farmers Union's Youth Arm. Um, so in that capacity, hope to also spread some light on that aspect as we go along. In terms of um, HIV, AIDS, I believe that is one of the most daunting diseases um, known to man at this point in our history, simply because it uses, one of the, one, one of the ways it, it uses to spread itself is through something that is supposed to bring forth life. It is a sexually transmitted disease, and sex is supposed to be uh, means by which a new generation comes forth. But instead of that happening, we have people losing their lives and then, and then school with other individuals and spreading the disease to a point that there's a certain fear, you know, that even you may be in a committed relationship with your spouse and they could bring it into the, into the equation, yes. you know? It's frightening. I love your perspective on it. You know, it shows me that you're very focused in terms hmm. of, you know, really speaking out on these type of issues. True. And Narissa, if you can tell me a bit uh, of yourself to our viewers, sure. and what does HIV mean to you? Well, my name is Narissa Changa, and I'm currently a student of Holy Faith Convent, Kuva. Um, well, HIV AIDS. To me, HIV AIDS is, as Javari said, is one of the most daunting diseases in Trinidad and Tobago right now. And too often you find we have discrimination and stigmatization against those who are infected with the disease True. and those living around these persons infected with the disease. Yes. And what I mostly focus on is how employees with mm. few, how, well, how does their perspective affect productivity True. in the workplace? How does their perspective on HIV AIDS affect productivity in the workplace? And what was interesting, I actually did at my SBA for Caribbean studies on HIV AIDS and that topic. And what I discovered that was that even though people are aware of the disease and they're educated about the disease, they are still afraid of contracting the disease. Right. And this is based on simple a simple paranoid disease, um, disorder. Mm -hmm. What it does is that even though you're educated, you would still tend to think that, okay, I can get, I can contract this disease through sharing the same washroom, mm -hmm. through um, eating similar food that is served by these people infected by disease. And people, based on the research that I collected, it, the, the respondents were stating that um, HIV AIDS to them, some people decided that, you know, it is not something that would affect productivity. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, it's something that should motivate the employees in at a workplace to, you know, um, protect these people affected yeah. by disease. So yeah. hence, productivity will not be um, affected. So, so that true. is how I look at HIV AIDS from yeah. the standpoint of a workplace. 
Right, and I, I um, I'm very appalled, I should say, in terms of, you know, um, the research, the study that you did in your school. I think that's commendable, though. Thank you. And I think it's something that will encourage even persons who are looking on and are HIV infected. And it's so true what you're saying, that discrimination is one of the major factors that HIV victims face. True. Because they are regarded as a, a, a cult or a wow. certain group by themselves. True. And people tend to say the worst of things and treat them really badly. True. And, you know, it's really great to hear your perspective of, as young people in terms of HIV but if you have a friend, and I'll start with you, Narissa, if you have a friend that has HIV, how would you treat that person? Or even say that, you know, it's a group of you all, and this person has confided in you, and, uh, you know, doesn't want anyone else to know that they are contracted, they have contracted HIV. However, it has been, the information has been let out of the bag, and everyone knows. So what advice would you give to that friend who is HIV infected, or even to the, your peers as well? Well, first of all, I'm not a very judgmental person. Um, well, I accommodate everybody. It does not matter um, if they're infected with a disease. It does not matter if they have a disorder. I accommodate everybody and what I would tell this person infected with HIV AIDS is you know sometimes you have to know who to trust to tell not everybody is good at keeping these secrets you understand and even so if it does get out there's going to be massive stigmatization massive discrimination and that will mentally affect this person so what I would say is okay you can come to me for advice you can go to somebody you trust for advice. Make sure, you know, like a family member yeah. or a close friend you've known for years that you can share anything with. You go to them for advice. You go to them in times of, you, you know, you need emotional support. Instead of, you know, you have to know who to trust, like I said. So you can't just go and tell each and everybody. Yeah. And trust, trust is one of the, the areas that we look at in terms of being affected with HIV. But if we look at persons who currently have the disease, it's really a traumatizing situation. It you know, it's something that you have to live with for the rest of your life un unless otherwise. It and it's something that a lot of people hide and they're ashamed of. But some people, they just don't care and you know, other people become infected through them. But Jamari, you tell me your thoughts in terms of persons who are infected with HIV and how they can make the best out of their situation. True. Well, um, I have, in terms of the focus of this conversation, I have the ability to draw from personal experience mm -hmm. due to my, my having friends that have contracted the disease. And you always see um, a dichotomy in how people deal with these things. Is that on this side, that they go into a mental place where they use their own body sometimes as weapons to spread the, the disease. Yes. And I think that's something we've seen a lot. Exactly. You especially know? in high schools. So, you know, it's something that's currently ongoing. Exactly. And, and people as young as, people from secondary school getting the virus and they, they would then spread it among their peers. And, and then on the other side, there are individuals, um, a young man I know who, when it came out that he had the virus, that he got the same stigmatization and people were, as he almost got fired. But by um, his own good conduct on the job, he was able to stay on the job and that kind of stuff. And he's looking to get married to someone who does not have the virus, but who knows that he has and is willing to work with him and that he's very lucky in that regard. Yes. He understands he has two daughters, both of whom are, are not um, HIV positive. And he's just, I love him as one of the, the most beautiful human beings that I know because he's just focused on being a better man despite yes. his mistakes mm -hmm. and on helping his daughters to know that Despite this has happened to my father and despite my mother's going astray as well, you don't have to go down the road. You can, you can enjoy the best. This just, I spoke to him just a couple um, weeks ago and he had went to the Hilton with his children and he spent some nights there to show them that even though things may be this way, this doesn't mean they can enjoy the fruits of life. Yes. You know, there's hope there. There is, and that's very, um, that's very motivating. Yeah. Even to our young people, I know one bit of advice I would like to give young people looking on as well is that do not be easily influenced by friends. Not because True. they engage in sex sexual activity means True. that you should as well. Because True. Sometimes HIV is one of the consequences of not listening to your parents it's so true. or following the crowd, as they say, and you know, trying to fit in. And it's, you know, it's always good to be unique. And you, you guys are young and you're still attending Holy Faith Convent. 
right? Yes. You know, tell us a bit about your school and the environment, how the girls interact with each other, and what are some of the challenges that they face, or has HIV been something that's rampant? Okay, so um, at Holy Faith Convent, what um, we promote is, you know, openness, basically. Hmm. You're allowed to voice your opinions, you're allowed to um, say what you like and don't dislike. But at Holy Faith Convent, and what I would applaud my principal for is that um, she, she tries to tell us that, you know, no matter if we are in a situation that, you know, we'll probably be bashed for, that we should lift our heads up and continue on. That is how Holy Faith is. And at Holy Faith, we, our girls, you know, you would actually have one or two that are, are accustomed to, you know, bashing others or, you know, um, discriminating others. But the majority of the school, they don't support that. They are very welcoming. It's a sisterly environment at Holy Faith. And you can approach one another without having to, you know, fearing about your size, about a disorder, about, you know, they're very welcoming at Holy Faith Convent. So I would say that my school environment, it's a good one. Yes. And the staff at Holy Faith, they ensure that there's equity, yeah. there's equality, mm -hmm. there, you know, that they're always an, an open floor that you can voice your opinions on. And with regards to HIV AIDS, at Holy Faith, we are aware of the disease, we are aware of how it is um, transmitted, and we are aware of what we can do as young women in society. We are aware of what we can do to facilitate those who are infected with disease. Yes. And yeah, that's basically how we are um, at Holy Faith Convent. <laughs> that's, that's a great structure to have in place, and I'm hoping that many other schools have such structure as well. But Jabari, tell me your thoughts. There may be some schools who may not have any structure, may not, students may not be able to voice their opinions, but what advice would you give to young people who are looking on, or even parents? And, you know, there's the topic of HIV. There are yeah. some who may be infected, opposed yeah. to those who may not. What advice would you give to them? Um, well, I guess to the parents, I would say that you should always have an open relationship with your, with your children. Make sure that you're always able to, to relate to them. Try your best so that they can always come to you and say, well, Dad, Mom, this is what's going on. This is what, what I'm struggling with, right? Um, in terms of um, young people, I would strongly suggest, um, they always say the best, the best cure is prevention. You understand? And um, in terms of abstinence, that is one of the, the greatest um, motivators to stay away from certain activities that will distract you from what is most important in life. At a young age, your job is to specifically spend your time creating a foundation for the rest of your life. Abstinence is the best way to go forward. And wait, sex is not running anywhere. Boys will be there, um, girls will be there. Sex in itself is beautiful, but it has a time and a context and a place. So wait, the right person will come. And if the, the right person will be willing to wait before they um, wait for marriage, before they have sex with you and enjoy your body. Thank you very much, guys. So let's look at this short clip that we're going to be viewing anorexia now. And we've dealt with HIV. So let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be discussing some further issues that our young people face. So you're watching Point of Focus. Good. We'll be right back. I'm Martel. I'm Sasha. I'm Josh. I'm Sandra. I'm Matt. I'm Maria. I'm Aaron. I'm Desiree. I'm Pedro. I'm Marcos. I'm Victor. I'm getting an HIV test because I didn't use a condom. Because I'm getting into a new relationship and I want both of us to be safe. Because I shared needles back in my party days. Because my husband had an affair and I just need to be sure. Because I've had an STD and I'm more at risk of contracting the HIV virus. Because now that there's a rapid oral swab test, I can no longer use my fear of needles as an excuse not to get tested. Because it only takes 20 minutes, and I can finally stop worrying, and it's free. Because I want to have kids, and I need to know how to protect my baby. Because I care about him. Because I care about him. Because I've got my own personal reasons to question my HIV status. What's your reason? for getting an HIV test. Go to erasedout.org for the other reasons you should get tested today. That's erasedout.org. Get tested. 
retreated. It's free.